Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. We are so back. We are so back to discuss American Horror Story Delicate episode six opening night. Okay. Listen, it's <laughs> been like six months since this show has been on the air. And was it worth the wait? Or did we get more of the same? I feel like we got more of the same. Guys, put your hard hats on for this video because I'm not going to be nice. Okay, here's the thing. Is American Horror Story Delicate good? No. <laughs> is American Horror Story Delicate occasionally fun to watch? Yes. It has not entered the idle zone where I'm just like straight up hating it and I enjoy making fun of it at every turn. But there are certain things about delicate including most of the commentary that the show gives about hollywood and for that i look at you mr ryan murphy i know you didn't write this but you're an executive producer <laughs> yeah. you still bear some responsibility 100 percent. why are all shows that produced are produced by hollywood mm -hmm. why are they also terrible at making fun of hollywood like why is this always the most ridiculous <laughs> outlandish thing like including here oh babette is dead she has no opportunity to win an Oscar now. And I know they tried to like write it in here that she did something sorted that, okay, the Academy's not gonna like this, but you know how many posthumous Oscars there have been or how many posthumous Oscar nominations there have been? I, I When they said, oh, there's no chance. I'm just like, really? Really? I would be more <laughs> worried if I was Anna. I'm just throwing that out there. I would be like shaking in my boots. I'd be like, why did she have to die? If you're if you're up to some shenanigans, Siobhan, shouldn't you have just found some way? I don't know. Listen, like, that Anna speech at her funeral, that was gold. I really <laughs> was just like shaking my head through the whole thing where she's basically like, this award and this award, and I'm up for this award now, and I'm going to nominate my nomination too bad. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is hilarious. It was so ridiculous. This show is on something. Like, I don't exactly know what it is that it's on, but it's it's very entertaining. It's not high art. Like, we have to just remind everybody of that. Like, I, I think I have a tinfoil hat theory as to what's oh. going on here that I can spell out throughout this video just in case we either want to feel like the prophecy is being laid out in these videos or I'm just gonna be terribly wrong and we can all laugh at me later. Listen, it's been a while since we've, we've been doing these videos, but my theory has always just been witches since the beginning. <laughs> and it feels like that's still kind of where yeah. we are. We got a lot of the same in this episode. I mean, we're gonna dive really far into this episode and what they're doing right and what they just need to get on with already. Like it's, it's getting very much the same old, same same old, same old. Okay. Hit that subscribe button, guys. That is the best way to make sure you don't miss anything else. We've also got here <laughs> previews, all sorts of other good stuff on American Horror Story Delicate. Yep. By subscribing, you help to support us to be able to make this content for you that, you know, we enjoy doing so, so much. Okay. Let's just put on our hard hats right, here and let's just talk on. about what is going wrong with the show. Because for me, when... It first started and, it, you know, I watched the first couple of episodes. And I was like, this story is really interesting and it's really compelling. Like, of course, there's some, you know, goofiness and campiness with it. There always is with this show. So, yeah. you know, that even if you have like a really solid, serious story, you're going to have some camp that comes with it. That's fine. This isn't like a super serious story. Like we're talking about very likely which. <laughs> what's going on here but yeah. at the same time the story was really compelling the sort of idea of this woman who you know was trying to get pregnant and she did get pregnant and these things are happening to her and nobody's believing her and everybody's in on it and it's like okay like let's go <laughs> and then it's been the same thing throughout the whole middle it feels like they had a beginning where they're like yeah we've got this set up cool i'm in and it feels like they probably have an ending to it you know we're gonna get to your theory and you know cool we're gonna get there but then we're in the middle where every single episode we're like oh there's more of these barbie dolls showing up you know that are her old dolls and they're showing up all over the place and you know she's putting the pins in and so the dolls are back again you know she's seeing you know she picks up this 
black cat that scratches her in the face deserved don't pick up your cat like that man don't pick up your cat like that oh my the lessons yeah lessons you know gentle you don't pick them up whatever deserved uh, but it's like i'm watching the same thing every week where it's like the the doll comes into play every week we know nobody she can't trust anybody she's you know seeing all these things that are happening but nobody else is seeing them everybody thinks she's crazy and then we'll get into the decks of it all a little bit later where he's just so oblivious to everything and i feel like the story's not progressing i'm not really getting anywhere okay here is the analogy i would draw with this it is a little bit like your classic cop procedural where you have bob and jane and bob and jane they're kind of flirting around there's like a giant ship community on facebook that's just like <laughs> Let's make Bob and Jane happen. Let's have that kiss. And then it's like season five and they still haven't kissed. And you're just sort of sitting here being like, what's going on? And eventually you come to this revelation that, oh, the producers are very worried that if they have Bob and Jane kiss, that there's no story the rest of the way. That's right. And that's why everybody then moves over and goes and watch Bones because they <laughs> actually just allowed them to kiss, get married and have kids. And it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Clearly... Delicate, they've never seen Bones, to kind of get this analogy going here full full force, because I think they're very worried that if they sort of give the game away as to what's really going on here, then they don't have any show after that. So clearly, they're stringing things along, and they're just hoping that these little sort of reveals that they're giving you are going to be enough. Like, take for starters, the start of this episode where we have this flashback, and it's pretty clear over time that, all right, this is Anna Victoria Alcott's father, and, you know, her mother has got this pulmonary embolism. She doesn't mm -hmm. make it. And, though, oh, who so happens to be here? It's Nicolette. She's been around the whole time. And it's like, okay, is this shocking? I guess, but at the same time, could we have all projected this was probably going to be coming? Yes, it's not like a, it, your jaw's not on the ground. Your jaw may have just been like hung open just maybe an inch, but that may just be because you're, you know, eating some popcorn and you want to pop it in there. It might not have anything to do with the show. Yeah, I mean, we know that some of these characters have been around a very long time anyways. The Ashleys, we've seen them all yeah. the way back in the back, right? Like, it's just been... They've been around a long time. We've known since pretty much the beginning where Miss Preach was just basically like, they're all in on it. Everybody's yeah. in on it. Like, we all know everybody's in on it. Like, I think we can all feel that. Anna's the only person that can't figure out what is going on. And, you know, I get it, right? Like, yeah. I get it. I get it for a couple of episodes, but not like six episodes. At this yeah. point, she should be starting to kind of pick up on something about it like what what is actually happening here and we did see a like a very little bit of that at the gallery and everything that was going on where she was starting to confront people to be like i know you're watching me i know you're doing this i can see that you're doing it but it's still kind of coming across as like does she see that it's happening or yeah. you know is this in her mind it she's just got She's got blinders on here. She's got Kim Kardashian blinders on here. And that, you know, Siobhan is her friend. Her friend would never do anything to hurt her. Even to the point where she's taking these weird vital vials of like B12 or whatever it is that was that just right. don't have any sort of branding on them. It's just like, sure, I'll take this mystery sort of thing. It's like you, you get the poison apple in front of you. Ooh, this looks delicious. Listen, I think as as ridiculous as that was, that part of the story <laughs> needed to be told because that way it showed us just how much she trusts Siobhan because yeah. we saw her with the doctor who was kind of like, you know, hey, take take this medicine. She's like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, you know, I'm mm. pregnant. And, ah, is it going to affect her? I don't know. But then you've got Siobhan who's a best friend who's like take this mystery vial of whatever i say it is okay <laughs> it is so once again this show is hilarious that doesn't always make sense i i enjoy watching it for the sheer nonsense that it's like pouring down our throats i will say that kim kardashian gave me a laugh in this episode that i did not expect her comedic timing on are you eating a bone was just so so funny yeah 
Kim's not bad on this show. I'm not saying you're going to go and put Kim on succession and she's going to be great. But it's like for this specific role, it suits her well. It's enough satire. She's clearly been in enough Hollywood circles that she knows how to lampoon a lot of this. All right. Let's talk about Dex, which has been (laughs) sort of my beef with this entire show. Now, I've never seen this actor before. His name is Matt. And you've seen him in The Resident. You've said that he's really good. I've heard he's really good. My cousin Wes loves him. This is the first time I've seen him in anything. And I don't think that this is the actor's fault. This feels like the writing behind this character. This This character has no character. There's no real layers to him. He doesn't, he doesn't seem to feel happy or sad or upset or caring or not caring. He's just nothing. And it's very weird because I, I've maybe seen a character like this, like a handful of times where there's just, there's nothing to them at all. So there's nothing for this actor to really lean into I just feel like every time I see this character I'm like why is Anna with this man he's not charismatic he doesn't seem to care about her he doesn't seem kind he doesn't seem cruel he doesn't seem anything like there's nothing here except that he's a good looking guy and that's not really enough he's smoldering he kind of, it's not enough. It's not kind enough of, for marriage. Like it's not enough. Is it? Is it enough? Let me know. If you had Dex, who has no personality whatsoever, he doesn't care about you, but he doesn't dislike you. He doesn't anything, but he's smoldering. Are you in or out? Marriage? Yes or no? No. I don't think he's actually a Twilight vampire, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of a Twilight vampire where he's just so (laughs) moody all the time and he's just so brooding. Okay. He's just so nothing. Like they really needed to give him something. They can make him mysterious and still give something. Okay. Did Matt Zutri, I'm sorry, Matt, if I mispronounce your name, I'm not good with all the Z's, (laughs) but you know, did Ryan Murphy show up to you and was basically like, listen, Matt, you're coming <laughs> off a highly successful show. Yeah. Come and do my show. I understand it's ridiculous. I understand you're going to be playing a very ambiguous man with no personality. But guess what? <laughs> We're going to give you five other shows after the fact. You can be... I don't want to say you can be the next Evan Peters because that implies that Matt has not done a lot of great stuff and didn't star in a hit show on Fox. But I, I, I do wonder if it was sort of like, okay, I need to get in good with this mega producer. This show, in theory, was supposed to film very, very fast. It could have just been a summer, early fall job. I know it all kind of got interrupted with the strikes and all that. Like, I think some of that may be what's going on here. Yeah, he's not a good character. I will say this. I don't think that Dex is in on any of this. I just think Dex sucks. I don't think he is involved in the larger sort of spider web of nonsense that's going on. Yeah, I'm I'm still not sure because, I mean, we saw everything that happened with his mother. Now his mother is gone. Yeah. He found her in this bathtub with the I tried to warn you, you know, going on on the, the window there. And there has been sort of this feeling where she's been trying to tell him like listen i need you to be on my side about this against your dad there's this thing that's been happening sort of like i don't know kind of like maybe like a group of people that are doing these things kind of thing it's like what's the connection to what's going on with anna is there it was she part of this group but she didn't know what was happening to her maybe dex's dad was part of this and it is all connected and dex doesn't know exactly what's going on but i think he knows more than he's letting on well, Dex, regardless of what you know or do not know, come come talk to Matt Rose here. I, I, I'm going to spell it out for you. Okay. Here's, All right. Here we go. Here's Theory time. What is happening, everybody? I have my tinfoil hat all right, on. Let's good. go. You, all, you, you will all need this, and you might throw it in the garbage in a week. But Let's here we go, go, witches. All right. Yes. Your witches thing. I believe that there are witches very much involved here. There are strange, immortal witches that are involved. I mean, we think back to the first part of this season. We had that flashback to many, many centuries in the past where there were some familiar characters there. It's Mm -hmm. 
already been spoiled for some inexplicable reason that Siobhan is fully in on it, has on the witch outfit and everything. I have no idea why they were like, sure, let's just go ahead and ruin this for people. I it's, think we all knew that. I though. guess. I mean, like, she's giving her vials of, like, yeah. questionable liquid. I mean, I think we all knew that. I think that's probably why they were like, you know what? We'll just put it in the promo that she's part of it. It's kind of like, okay, we knew. It's just so weird. Like, this is a show that for Roanoke, you guys didn't even put a promo out there. You guys were just like, just watch and see. And now <laughs> they're just throwing big twists out there against the wind. But regardless, this is something that has been going on for a very long period of time. And because of something that happened in regards to Anna's parents, they sort of had faded or determined that Anna was going to be a quote unquote chosen one who was a part of this. That's why Nicolette was there from the very beginning. And that they sort of wanted to have a way to watch and monitor her life. I think they needed at the same time, these witches, somebody else who they would be more than fine with ruining to a certain degree. Somebody who they had an ax to grind against. And that's where we get into Dex, where it seems like Dex's father is an absolutely atrocious human being, as mm -hmm. has been established on the show. I think he's got a past with some of these people that really sparked things off, made them hate him more, made it be like, okay, even more we have a reason to go after Dex. And even more we have a reason to turn Dex's mother into Rita from Dexter and just to <laughs> kind of do all of these different things. And that's before we even get to the idea of Adeline, who seems to have been some sort of like rogue gone against some of these things mm -hmm. that has been established on the show already. But this has all been sort of set up for a long time because it brings us into Talia, who actually had something more to do in this episode. Congratulations, Talia, where <laughs> it was thrown out there that she, you know, not only is she not having cameras in the basement, like mm -hmm. that's a part of it. So that's clearly where, you know, the house of horrors are, where they can shuffle in things to make Anna feel like she's crazy. Yeah. But beyond all of that, it also seems like she was the person who was really responsible for encouraging Dex and Anna to kind of get together where yeah. she's like, oh, you guys, you should give this a shot. You should make this happen, Dex. So clearly she was being tasked with this responsibility, even if she doesn't like Anna, even if now they're together, she can be however she wants to be. It's like, you're, you're a part of this. There's a reason why Miss Preach has thrown out what she has thrown out here. Yeah. And let's talk about her because yeah. she was around at the beginning of this and she kind of disappeared in the middle and now she's back again. We're at the point that Anna's yeah. like, I need some answers. Maybe this person who's just kind of showed up out of nowhere, gave me a card that was like, you know, don't trust anybody. Here's a phone number. Yeah. Maybe it's time. Okay. An important PSA to the Ashley's Siobhan, anyone else. Shouldn't you have like a tail on Miss Preach at this point? Like, shouldn't you know that Miss Preach is going to be up to so no good? Like, aren't you going to try to just jettison Miss Preach into the sun? Given yeah. given everything else that you guys have done, including to Dex's mother, I'm surprised they're letting Miss Preach just sort of be alive and be a part of this. I don't know if she has like some mystical cloak of invisibility or something where only Anna can see her. What's going on here? I think part of the problem is, is that the show has not spent enough time with yeah. Miss Preach to let us kind of have a better idea of who she is or why she is still alive. Because if the Ashleys and Siobhan and all of them are this powerful, they've been around for centuries, you know, why are they letting Miss Preach just kind of go about her business and help? You know, she's she's in the shadows, but not that much that they wouldn't have been able to figure it out that she's around or that they need to take care of her. So it's time. This next episode needs to be a Miss Preach episode where we actually get to know who she is, how long she's been around, what is she doing, and why she's been able to evade them. Yeah, and if they can pay all that off, I think this season goes up a couple of ticks. Like, let's let's be honest here. This season is never going to be Murder House. It's never going to be, you know, 1984 even, which I really, really like. I know not everybody does. But the real situation is, however dense and interesting that stuff is, it's not going to be enough to compensate for just, like, the pure Hollywood nonsense that is going on, including everything, you know, with the speech that you mentioned earlier. Everything that was great. With, 
Anna's viral video from the first part of this season. It's it's all so ridiculous, including Kim Kardashian's speech where she's just sort of like, your baby would want you to have this. How dare you think of anything? I, I'm just like sitting here. Just I, I want to just armadillo myself into a ball <laughs> and roll out of the scene because I'm just thinking, this is also dumb. This is also ridiculous. I, nobody thinks like this. Maybe they do. Maybe the problem here is me. Maybe it's that I'm not an actor. I have not been nominated for an Oscar. I have never been a part of this process. But I kind of feel like, you know what? It's going to be okay. You were on a highly successful movie. You're going to get some other million-dollar movie deal, Anna. It's it's going to be fine. You don't have to put up with this. It's just, it's all so ridiculous. I'm, I don't know if I'm meant to just sit back and laugh and not take it seriously, but that's all I'm doing. This is the thing about the show where it's just not meeting up for me. Like, I love American Horror Story in general. Like, yeah. if they decide that they're going to do a really campy season, man, they go, like, all down, down the hole with that. Yeah. If they're doing something that's... A little more serious, like Murder House, they really commit to that. Where this season, it feels like they've got some campiness with it, but they're also trying to be a little bit serious with it, but they don't know what to do in the middle with it. And they're just repeating themselves over and over again, where we see Anna in these situations where it's like, you know... Anna thinks she's crazy, throw in a doll, throw in some visions, nobody believes her. Next episode, same thing. Like, they need to get their footing on this and fast. Yeah, I think the other problem, and this is, you know, obviously something unintended. It could have been resolved. You guys just paid your freaking actors and writers in enough time. But this was not meant to be a show in two parts. Like, I think that's pretty clear in watching this episode. It felt very much like this should have just aired a week after episode five. It should have all been continuous. It would work better. It's absolutely true. But this was some of my criticism already back in like our last two or three videos whenever this aired last October or whatever. Yeah, it was like I was already feeling this way where it was like every week it's the same thing. Like they need to move the actual story somewhere where, you know, we, we get it. Nobody believes Anna. Okay, great. Like let's move into the next spot. And if they weren't ready to move her into the next spot, they needed to give some spotlights on some of these other characters so that we can kind of get some other stories going on. Oh yeah. That reminds me. Ivy was in this episode. It's like, Oh yeah. Cara D. Levine, you are a major part of this show in theory. Major? You were in the credits. You, she was one of the three posters they put out and started the season. I know. She's been in this show for like a minute. Like, she's she's barely in the show. I just also find it hilarious that they made her be somebody at the art gallery. And it's just like, okay, is Carol Levine just contractually obligated to play art gallery employees <laughs> on all of her various shows? But all right, all right. That's what we got here on American Horror Story Delicate, episode six. Thank you, guys. So much for hanging out with us. You can, you know, check that box right there if you want to see some of our other reviews for American Horror Story Delicate. Also, join our Patreon. We have a link in the description below. We do, you know, live streams about American Horror Story, all sorts of other good stuff there. Yes, every single week we've got live streams over there so you can come and talk to us about American Horror Story or anything else we're covering here at the channel. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you here next time.